Hello and welcome everyone to Courageous Joy, Activating the Radical Voice of the Heart, where wisdom keepers from all over the globe are helping us remember that right now, we have a golden opportunity to choose the emotions we experience, the thoughts we think, and the steps we take to vision in the world we've been dreaming of. And we do this by listening to and leading with the most powerful voice in the universe, our hearts. And we want to remember that this is no longer optional, but mandatory if we're ever going to create the sustainable living situation on this planet that we desire. I'm Kathy Forrest, and I'm the founder of Celestial Forest Institute, and it is my great joy to be here with my dear friend, Jocelyn Mercado. Welcome, Jocelyn. So happy to have you on the call today. Thank you, Kathy. Um, yeah, so excited to be here. So Jocelyn is a visibility and thought leader, leadership coach. She's a spiritual alchemist and the founder of Sacred Planet. She shares shamanic and all chemical wisdom to guide courageous seekers and how we can co-create a revolutionary new world in alignment with Mother Earth and the vast intelligence of the cosmos. After a successful 15 year corporate career working in finance for major multinational companies, Jocelyn was thrust into a deep spiritual awakening. It was that awakening which turned her life upside down and from which she emerged with a powerful understanding of how her intuition and healing abilities, aspects of herself she'd never had access to before, um, and these drove her deeply into earth-based and shamanic practices. And she's now studied alongside elders and wisdom keepers ever since. Today, she works with visionaries, revolutionaries, and change makers all around the world, guiding them to break free from everything that holds them back so they can joyfully offer their highest contribution to our collective future. And Jocelyn, I'm so excited about your topic, healing our hearts from the stars to the earth. Wow. Um, yes, I'm excited too. I, I have to tell you, as I was listening to your introduction, I got kind of choked up. That's why my voice is a little hoarse <laughs> and I have like tears coming out. It's so powerful, your, what you're delving into and the, the mysteries that you're exploring with this topic, Kathy. I just want to say thank you so much for creating this. Ah, well, you know, she just taps me on the shoulder, the name <laughs> drops in, and then every, all the magic starts to happen. So I'm just like going, okay, here we go. We're going to do this now. <laughs> yes, so amazing. So, so why do you think it's so important to connect with the stars in order to heal our hearts? Yes. Well, there's so much here. Um, you know, the, the stars are this really, really important part of who we are, right? So starting from the point of we know we're made from stardust. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, so then it, billions of years ago, when when stars have exploded, that material coalesced and it made the earth and it made these planets that are in our little neighborhood, <laughs> of the, mm -hmm, right. our little galaxy the solar system here right and and then those same elements made us mm -hmm. so we are we are intricately interconnected with all that is out there in the stars and so the blood that flows through our heart and our veins mm -hmm. is made of the iron that was formed in a star billions of years ago right in many stars billions of years ago and so it's like this is why astrology works <laughs> you know and this is why we feel that sense of awe when we look up at the stars at nighttime and we just allow the, the beauty and the vastness of that to permeate because we are, again, we're intricately woven into this web of life, this Indra's net, mm -hmm. right, of jewels that we, that we all are. Um, we are intricately woven together with the stars. And so there's a part of, um, the, the, when we look at the indigenous and the ancient traditions and their beliefs around the heart. Mm -hmm. Many of them say that the heart is this organ that yes, it has its physical function, mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. um, but yet there's this other aspect to it where it's actually connected to the cosmos, the heart in, in many different, so if you look at ancient indigenous or yet North American indigenous beliefs, or if you look at ancient Egyptian beliefs, um, the ancient Egyptians actually had two words for the heart. One was the word for the physical organ. The other was the word for the spiritual aspect of it. Mm -hmm. And so these ancient traditions will often speak of the heart as receiving information from the cosmos. So it's like our heart has these antennas that are reaching out, collecting all the vast wisdom from the grandmothers and grandfathers out there, all the stars and planets, and bringing that into our bodies. And we have so much more wisdom and knowledge in us, of course, than we even know, right? We know this. Uh, mm -hmm. We have wisdom from our ancestors that's held in our DNA. Mm -hmm. But we also have this wisdom from the cosmos, from these vastly intelligent beings out there, mm -hmm. stars and planets, um, that we have access to at any time. And when we connect in with our heart, we can, we can find that wisdom. We can, we can awaken that wisdom within us. Wow. So that really lends um, a lot of information, I think, to our to our broad topic, um, courageous joy activating the radical voice of the heart, because he, this year has been so crazy for so many people, and it's really almost has been designed to kind of shake us and wake us and maybe activate that voice. Um, why do you say that our hearts are the main balancing force in our bodies as we received? Because I think a lot of people think that we get intuitive information maybe through our gut or through the back of our head. I don't know that people are as adept at accessing heart intuitive information, psychic information, even healing abilities. Can you speak into that a little bit? Yes. So uh, again, here, there's various aspects to this. One piece that's really important to recognize is that, yes, a lot of the upgrades that we're receiving mm -hmm. at this time, so the enhanced intuitive abilities, enhanced psychic abilities. You know, I hear more and more people having psychic dreams that are telling the future in some way. Mm -hmm. um, enhanced healing abilities, like people who have been doing Reiki for years, all of a sudden it's like just, it's coming through them like this extra forceful electric energy, you know, more so than ever before. Mm -hmm. So we're getting these upgrades. And so the way that 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 often enters into us, the way that we perceive it is through the upper chakras, very mm -hmm. much through the crown, mm -hmm. right? And then our intuition being like the open third eye really turned on um, and the throat being the way then we can express that, mm -hmm. that new information or new abilities. Mm -hmm. But the heart is here in the center, mm -hmm. right? Now the heart is also receiving from the cosmos, but the heart, ha the heart has a lot of roles. So another role that the heart has is to balance between the upper chakras, mm -hmm. which are very connected to, to the above, right? Mm -hmm. And the lower chakras, which are very connected to the earth and very grounded. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting because then if we sense into our root chakra with the roots going down into the earth, right? Mm -hmm. And then the sacral chakra where the womb space is and that creation ability, again, connected with, with the earth and, and her, you know, procreative, like mother of all energy. And then our personal power in the sacral chakra. These are much more grounded, rooted in the earth, more physical, mm -hmm. right? And the upper chakras are more celestial and the heart is in the center balancing all of these. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. in this evolutionary process that we're experiencing right now, and I invite everyone listening to really tune into this, some of us are feeling more connected with the lower chakras, more grounded, more like I am of the earth, and some of us are feeling more connected with the upper chakras. I'm getting all these upgrades. Like I feel so cosmic. Mm -hmm. And what we want to focus on is bringing all of them into balance with each other. Right. Mm -hmm. And that balancing energy needs to flow through the heart. Mm -hmm. um, so this is, this is one part that's really important to think about is how, how can we keep all of our chakras in balance? As we're getting these upgrades, we're feeling so much. I think a lot of us are feeling it very, very much on the cosmic upper chakra level, right? Mm -hmm. But how can we use the heart and the lower chakras to be a grounding force to fully bring that into our bodies? Because if we're just processing it up here, 
we can be having, and this is why I, I think a lot of people are having some medical issues or some health, like weird symptoms, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, because we're getting all these upgrades, but we don't know, or our 3D bodies don't know exactly how to integrate it all into the physical realm. Right. So when we, when we balance the heart and, and allow that to balance all the chakras together, mm -hmm. that can often diminish or get rid of these the odd symptoms that we're having, which are a product of, of the body trying to keep up with all the, the spiritual mm -hmm. upgrades that we're getting. Wow. Yeah. So are there particular beings that want to help us as we activate our superpowers? Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> And I, I invite everybody to, you know, we could even, we could do a meditation on this today sure. if you want to sure, find absolutely. out what, yeah, who these beings are that are coming in specifically for you. Mm -hmm. I know I have a new guide who has come in that is very, very much centered in the heart. He's been mm -hmm. teaching me about my heart. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so that's been really fascinating, but mm -hmm. I feel like there are some guides that are really universal to all of us to work with the heart. Mm -hmm. One of them being the lion. Mm -hmm. So the lion as a master teacher animal. Um, now we know the lion is all about courage, right? Fierceness, mm -hmm. right? So there's this energy of like fierce love mm -hmm. and courage is, you know, the word core is the root word for, for heart in, in Latin languages. So it's core in French, it's corazón in Spanish. Mm -hmm. We know that the heart is this place that that like powers our courage, right? Mm -hmm. Powers our fearlessness, our ability to take fearless action. And this is something that's so important for us in this, in this new world, this brave mm -hmm. new world we're entering into, right? So the lion as a master teacher animal is really important. Right. Um, if we think of the stars, then we can connect this with Leo the lion and mm -hmm. the star Regulus. So that's, mm -hmm. you might feel called to connect with Regulus, cultivate mm -hmm. that energy in your, in your body, in your being. Mm -hmm. um, but the lion as a symbol of this is, is extremely powerful. So we might want to practice um, being in, in lion energy, right? Mm -hmm. Being in the lion or lioness mm -hmm. energy, really feeling the fierceness mm -hmm. um, and fierceness. So this is important to mention. Fierceness is very different than um, anger. Sometimes right. we can kind of associate those two, but fierceness is different. Fierceness mm -hmm. comes not from a feeling of lack or being threatened. It comes from this love, right? Mm -hmm. That's very much from the heart. Right. So when we can embody the lion, when mm -hmm. we can act with fierce love, there's the no end to what we can, what we can right. create in that right. energy. Yeah. So I, and, and I feel like all big cats are kind We're of kind really of associated, associated with this, right? This fierce Mm -hmm. very much connected with the heart. Mm -hmm. So for everybody listening, maybe sense into which of the big cats feels most powerful for you right. and begin to work with that, that being in relation to your heart. So whether it's a jaguar or a cheetah or a mm -hmm. panther, you know, mm -hmm. tiger. Um, so it's interesting really you mentioned that because the grandmother that governs this moon cycle, walks tall woman, her medicine animal is a mountain lion. And oh, she's yeah. all about balance, balancing the masculine and the feminine. So um, that makes perfect sense that we're having this conversation right now. <laughs> yes. Well, and and so and there's a couple other beings that I sure. want to mention. I think uh -huh. are really here to help us with the heart right now. Mm -hmm. So in the ancient culture of Egypt, we have the goddess Isis. Mm -hmm. Now she is closely related to also the goddesses Ish. Tar and Inanna, right? Mm -hmm. Who are, were goddesses in ancient uh, Sumeria and 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 Babylon, mm -hmm. and so this kind of um, almost like the you know she's like three goddesses in one. This Isis, Ishtar, Inanna, all three of these goddesses are very very much based in the heart. They both have, I mean, they all three have a strong mothering energy. Right. But they also have a really strong dark goddess destroyer energy. So it's very interesting, right? It's the, it's the full life cycle. And, and this is the, the shamanic path, the initiatory path from mm -hmm. life and, and birth, right? And then death. And then death always leads to rebirth. Mm -hmm. This is a big lesson of these goddesses. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like there's something really important here in recognizing that death is never an ending. 
Okay, death is always a new beginning. Mm -hmm. We just are changing form, right? And of course, there's physical death where our body dies and we know we're gonna change form and come back as, as another being, right, in mm -hmm. some way. Mm -hmm. But also there are deaths that have to happen in our lives where we let go of a career or we let go of a relationship or we let go of some part of our identity that we were clinging to very tightly, right? Mm -hmm. And it takes great courage to step into this place of letting go when the time comes. Right. So these goddesses, these mother, mother goddess on the one side, destroyer goddess on the other side, have a really important message for us around that, around being willing to surrender mm -hmm. into your courage at this time, being mm -hmm. willing to let go of clinging and expectations. Mm -hmm. um, like this is the, the courageous joy <laughs> for sure, <laughs> right? <laughs> like opening up to the beauty and the ecstasy that can come through to us sometimes requires that we let go of something really big that that we might have been holding on to mm -hmm. um so this isis ishtar and nana they they are all here to help us with that journey that initiatory part of the journey wow. so yeah. now there's one last piece here one mm -hmm. last piece that i want to mention so the star sirius mm -hmm. is connected with these goddesses it's especially connected with isis mm -hmm. the Egyptian mother goddess. Mm -hmm. And so the star Sirius, um, we can actually see, in, I believe in all places in the world right now, we can see Sirius rising in the late evening, early, early nighttime right now in the east. Okay. So um, you'll see the Pleiades and then you'll see Orion coming up. And then after Orion, you'll see Sirius coming up. Beautiful, brilliant blue star. Wow. And so there's something that happens every August which is called the lion's gate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so what the lion's gate is, it, it was a very critically important time in ancient Egypt, actually critically important for the survival of the people mm -hmm. because leading up to this date, which for them was in late July, but because of the precession of the equinoxes is now for us in early August, leading up to that time, there would be this time of drought where the Nile River dropped really low, there were no rains. And when Sirius then began to appear, when she made her heliacal rising, which is her the first appearance of a star on the Eastern horizon after having been in the underworld or invisible mm -hmm. for, for a long time, then the, the Nile River would raise, the floods would come, the rains would come, and it was like life was returning to the land. Mm -hmm. So this star Sirius being connected to Isis in the ancient Egyptian traditions, this meant that the mother had returned, the goddess had returned, and she was bringing the life back to the land. I get chills as I as uh -huh. I think about it. Uh -huh. So this star Sirius, even if we're not at the Lion's Gate time, we can look up in the nighttime sky and see this beautiful star Sirius, Isis, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we can know that she's bringing life to us. She's bringing courage. She's bringing this energy of the Lion's Gate to us. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I feel like that's a, one other being, it's, it's a, a star, right? But a very important intelligent being for us to connect with as we are healing our hearts. Mm -hmm. So is there anything you can tell us? And yes, I do want you to lead us in a guided meditation, but is there anything you can say or speak into about um, choosing? choosing the emotions that we engage with our hearts versus um, thinking that everything outside of us has to dictate the emotions that we're engaging in. Yes, definitely. This I love this question. Thank you for asking this, Kathy. It's really <laughs> powerful. So we're, we're kind of at this choice point right now mm -hmm. where we get to choose the vibrational frequency that we want to carry in our bodies mm -hmm. moving forward. Mm -hmm. And we, so the vibrational frequency of the world around us with all the political upheaval, the, the, you know, the, um, a lot of fear mm -hmm. around the pandemic and many different aspects of life. Mm -hmm. Um, they are environmental situation, our educational systems being shaken up. Like there's a lot of really low vibrational energies. And what I mean by that, let me try to explain what I mean by like high vibrational, low vibrational. The lower vibrational is, it, it feels more like we're stuck, right? Mm -hmm. It feels like we're more um, 
we're limited in our choices. We're not so free. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you're if you have a situation in your life where it just feels immovable, it feels unsolvable, right? right? That's a low, right? A, a low vibrational frequency energy to that situation. Mm -hmm. And so it can be really hard because we can, we can feel very stuck. Right. And we right. can be like, I just mm -hmm. I don't see how to get out of this. Mm -hmm. Now, in order to shift all of this that's happening in our world mm -hmm. and in order to create the new future that we've been longing for, that we've been waiting for, we really, we need to start with each of us as an individual mm -hmm. embodying and returning to a very high vibrational, or I like to think of it as an expansive mm -hmm. vibrational energy. And what this is, so I explained that the, the low vibration is, is very dense. It feels stuck. It feels limiting. Like there's not a lot of options. Mm -hmm. The high vibrational or expanded vibration, it feels like freedom, mm -hmm. right? And it feels like we're receiving this continual flow of information and intelligence from the stars and from the earth. Mm -hmm. um, it feels very joyful, very optimistic, mm -hmm. very courageous and bold and fearless, you know, all of these things. So it, it, takes some, it takes some time, right? It takes some shifting within ourselves, within our psyche, within our perception of the world. But our job right now is to choose to move more and more into really embodying, letting our thoughts be with that expansive vibration, um, you know, letting our decisions that we make be in the energy of that expansive vibration more and more as much as we can. Now, I have a practice that's really easy mm -hmm. to do that can help you with this. So here's what I recommend. So vibration is is made from sound mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. sound is is very much the basis of all all things that are created. We know from from quantum physics that we're all you know, everything is vibration, even something that seems very solid like this table here it's all the atoms are vibrating and within mm -hmm. us too, we're, we're, we're a vibration. So think of something, think of a sound mm -hmm. that feels to you very expansive, very filled with freedom. So it might be the sound of a, a singing bowl, a crystal bowl. Mm -hmm. It might be a song that just lifts you up and like lightens your heart when you hear it. Mm -hmm. um, it might be, it might be a song that you like to sing yourself, or it might be a, a certain toning or chanting that you can do might be the sound of children laughing, right? Whatever that is for you or birds singing, mm -hmm. whatever a sound is that comes up for you that feels really expansive. Okay. Just think of this sound, or if you can make the sound, play the crystal bowl, mm -hmm. sing the song mm -hmm. and put your hands on your heart mm -hmm. and feel the vibration of that sound, that expansive sound in your heart space and just really be with it and let it echo out from your heart and move and ripple out to your entire being. Mm -hmm. And this is a really beautiful practice to do just once a day, even if you only do it for like three minutes a day. Sure. It's very powerful because it's every time you do it, it's raising your vibration more and more. And what happens when we raise our vibration in, in this kind of way, connecting with that, that expansive energy that we, we know is possible, those unsolvable situations with time, right? Or sometimes mm -hmm. very suddenly, a miraculous new solution or opportunity will come in that we never expected and allow you to move through that, mm -hmm. right? Um, or, or you'll have an idea that comes through an insight for, oh my gosh, I know, and now I know, now I see how I can work with this or what I'm meant to learn from it. So then you can move forward because we can't solve these unsolvable problems. We can't solve them from being in that low stuck place. Right. They can only be solved from that expansive mm -hmm. place. So right. this is our choice point now. We get to decide and we really, we really do have the ability to choose. Yeah. So try that exercise, see how yeah. it moves you, see how it shifts you. That sounds beautiful. So I'm real excited. You've offered to lead us in a guided meditation that it's gonna, I'm assuming, take us out to the stars and let us receive yes. information for ourselves. This sounds delightful. Yes. Um, if you'd like to do that, we would love to receive that. Okay, wonderful. Well, let's just drop in here. So close your eyes, everyone listening, and just begin taking some deep breaths. When you breathe in now, breathe into your heart. And so you might want to place one or both hands on your heart and just take a deep breath in. 
and release that breath all the way out. And with every in-breath, know that you are breathing in the magic of the oxygen and the sunlight and all the miracles that continually surround us. And with every out breath, allow your muscles to relax a bit more. Allow your mind to let go of any limitations. And as you continue with this breathing, allow your, your awareness to drop down out of the thinking mind, right? We wanna let go of the thinking mind for now. Drop that awareness down into your heart and set the intention now with me here that you will be perceiving from your heart. Continuing to breathe into that heart space. And now I invite you to imagine yourself in a beautiful place in nature, a place that feels safe, and familiar to you and let it be a sunny day there and see yourself standing barefoot, the soles of your feet connecting into the vast unconditional love energy of mother earth and just feel the light, the heat of the sun shining on your skin. Look around and take in all the beautiful nature, all the miracles of life around you. And now there's a new guide that's going to come in. This is a guide who wants to work with you to connect you more and more deeply to your heart and through your heart to the stars. So see, notice who this guide is that is showing up now walking or flying in to be with you in this beautiful place in nature. And trust that this guide is here to protect you. They are here for your highest good, your highest evolution. And now this guide is going to take you and fly you up and out into the cosmos. So go ahead and just allow yourself to be taken away and permeated with this expansive, immense sense of freedom. As you fly up and into the stars and know that you're leaving behind the heaviness the denseness of our 3D structural world. And you're entering into a whole new realm of being, a whole new realm of perception that feels light and expansive. And you know that all possibilities are available to you from this space. And so fly with your guide and you will notice that there is a particular region of the sky that is calling to you. Maybe it's the beautiful blue star Sirius. Maybe it's the constellation of Cygnus the Swan. Maybe it's the bright star Altair or one that comes up for you. So let your guide take you to this place and just trust wherever you're going, this place has been a home for you. So go to this place in the stars. And as you get closer, you see that there are star beings here who are excited to welcome you home and you feel so much joy and love rising up in your heart as you recognize them. And you know this is one of your origin points in the cosmos where your soul came from. And with your guide now, sit down 
with the star family and let them tell you about your beautiful soul contract in this lifetime. Let them explain to you the deeper reasons why you've had to go through certain challenges. And then hear them tell you about your greatest soul's mission in this lifetime and how you're meant to carry that out. And just allow your heart to expand and soak up all of this beautiful truth about you, about who you really are and what you're really here for. And then once you've received this information, allow yourself to just sit there in the presence of your star family, in the presence of this new guide, in the presence of all the stars shining down upon you and just feel the expansiveness, the freedom, the joy deep within your heart. and know that you can remember this and always, always return to this, this deep knowing, this freedom at any time that you wish. And now before you go, your star family has a gift for you. They're holding it out. It's in a little treasure chest so go ahead and open the treasure chest and see what the gift is inside. Know that this gift is a message from your soul, your eternal soul, this part of you that has been with you for many, many, many lifetimes and will be with you for many, many lifetimes more. And whatever this gift is, if it resonates for you, then tuck it away, hold it in your heart and say, thank you. Give love and blessings to your star family and then fly back with your guide back down to earth, landing in your beautiful place in nature. You can thank your guide now, give them a hug and know that this guide is going to continue to be here for you, to help you continue opening, expanding your heart into this beautiful place of freedom and possibility. And then watch your guide turn to go. And just stand here for a moment in your beautiful place, soaking up the sunlight, soaking up that unconditional love energy from Mother Earth through the soles of your feet. And if there's a prayer that you would like to send out to the world, go ahead and send out that prayer now from this beautiful expansive place. And when you're ready, begin to become aware of your breathing once again, breathing into your heart, coming back into your body, into the here and now. 
And when you're ready, you can open your eyes. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. That was fun. That felt Yay. so yummy. And yes. um, I could, you know, I have practices of my own. Whenever I, whenever the title for this dropped in, I started having this experience where I would just feel a flood of joy just come in to my heart and I could generate it. I could make more of it. And you took us to that place. I mean, it's like people can do a meditation like this. Um, you could even listen to this one over and over to get there. But that was beautiful, Jocelyn. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. So and yeah, I just uh, I want to share one thing for everybody listening. Whatever mm -hmm. came through there, there's some important pieces for you that you don't want to forget. And so when we do these meditations or these journeys, it's very much in the dream time and the memory of it can fade. So definitely once this interview is done, get your notebook or your journal and write down those important things so you always remember. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what parting words do you have for our listeners today, Jocelyn, and how can they find you if they want to get a hold of you? Yes, well, for the, uh, the parting words, I, I just want to say um, we, are, we are capable of such much vaster possibilities than we can possibly know, right? And so when we connect in with the heart, when we cultivate that joy, expansiveness, that freedom, that connects us to the vastness of the stars. Mm -hmm. And that allows us to understand and receive the instructions, right, mm -hmm. from our guides and the information mm -hmm. for how we can really create that, that new future, both for ourselves individually and for the world mm -hmm. that is just so expansive, full of, of these vast possibilities. So mm -hmm. um, just know, just know you are, you are destined for so much beauty, magic, um, so much more than you possibly could know. Absolutely. So trust, me, trust in that. Absolutely. And yeah, um, people, the best places to find me are uh, my website, which is wearesacredplanet.com. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And on Facebook, there's a, a Facebook page for Sacred Planet, my business. Beautiful. So those are the best places to connect. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Jocelyn. This has been delightful. And you've really taken us to the place where we can literally, you know, this is why we want to do it. And um, you helped us get in the door. So thank you so much for that. Beautiful. Thank you, Kathy.